Halo is saved! 343 Industries is dead! Halo's future has never been better! Halo is back, baby, and 343 is done! Nah. This is just the same cycle the Halo community falls in whenever they think there's positive news. Temper your expectations. The game studio formerly known as 343 Industries, the notorious developers responsible for Halo's plummet in relevancy, is now known as... Halo Studios. And what a funky logo that is. What the hell? It was also officially revealed that future Halo games will be developed on Unreal Engine 5. Is this one of the best things to happen to 343 Industries? Perhaps. Leading up to this, three members of 343's leadership were fired and then layoffs hit the studio. Is that great? Yes, except some talented people were hitting those layoffs too. But does that mean everything in the studio is gonna suddenly change for the better? No. The problems of 343's former leadership persist beyond the people who are no longer there. The roles of leadership literally include shaping the behaviors, philosophies, and values of a company. They create the work ethics and culture. That takes time, and the previous leadership had over a decade to set that all in. There's new leadership now, sure, but the effects of the old management can't be undone with just a press of a button. There are deep-rooted habits and mindsets, and that's assuming the new leadership really is better and is willing to undo such things. This new leadership has been in charge since 2022, and we barely had any communication from them. Bad habits still linger. Don't believe me? How about we take it from someone who actually worked there? An animator named Will Waltz, who spent 13 years at 343 Industries, boldly spoke up about this big change and called out the leadership too. Will's post started making waves on Halo Twitter after Haley shared it, alongside eye-opening insider info about 343's rocky history with Unreal Engine. It quickly started grabbing attention, pulling in big names like Grums, Mint Blitz, and other influential accounts that just couldn't ignore it. As a side note, let me be clear that mentioning any individual in my video or using them as a source does not imply my endorsement of their views on any other matters they may have expressed. I'm including them solely because they are relevant to this topic. Anyway, I've mentioned Haley in my videos before. She has a solid track record having accurately leaked details like the end of MCC development and Joe Staten's departure before it became public, among other valuable insights. We can definitely trust her words here. Before we dive into what Haley said though, let's check out Will's posts on LinkedIn and what he had to say. I worked for them as a top performing industry animator for 13 years. I do not recommend working for 343 Industries, Halo Studios. It's like Comcast calling themselves Xfinity and hoping nobody notices. Steer clear and stay safe out there. They are not worth it. Feel free to PM. To be clear, employees have been some of the industry's finest because we all have fond memories of Halo and the Microsoft pay is nice, but their leadership is cancer. Pierre especially, and you'll hate how creatively limiting they are. I have no doubt that even though the execs finally gave in to switching to Unreal, they will find a way to organizationally make it unfun to work there. So as I was saying, leadership can still be rotten despite there being three less people in those leadership positions. People praise Pierre so much just because he led the team that made bug fixes and updated the Master Chief collection. Keep in mind, the devs did all the work, not Pierre. The task at hand is much different now though. We're talking about creating entirely new Halo games and steering the direction of the franchise, not just fixing a broken game. We only have a faint idea of the creative vision he directs, and based on this X343 developer, Pierre is far from the saving grace that Halo needs. He goes on to say, CE played a huge part in the decision to go towards games as an animator for me too. Well, that and CS 
breaks my heart too. Imagine telling a studio loudly, almost daily, how to succeed for 13 years. Seven of them were spent educating a clueless executive team with a purely corporate publishing background and no real hands-on coding or art, and in some cases, gaming experience, how to actually make something and explaining to them over and over why using Unreal for the next game, Infinite, would be far better for them to switch to now that they decided the game should be vastly dynamic and open world. The last five years at 343 for me were spent, aside from animation duties, hiring UX designers, educating an entire studio on why a good user experience is important for artists to have fun while they make their best work. I remember, before they did it, explaining that they'd likely save billions of dollars if they switched. Imagine all of that and then to have the studio lay you all off without a thank you, without even an acknowledgement of 13 years of work, just an email shows up one day from Microsoft HR. Then a year later they say they have a great idea, they're switching to Unreal. Gosh, that is a punch in the gut. 13 years he spent there. He's been there since the start of 343 Industries, and their leadership barely wanted to listen to him. Only years later, and after they laid him off with a bunch of others, did they decide to actually give the idea of switching to UE a chance. How inconsiderate of them. He continues, like this is how bad it got. They released the game without an industry standard in-game player reporting feature. It came down to me seeing a female streamer being harassed by male gamers while she played, and I looked for a feature I just assumed the UX team would have built a robust version of. Nope, nothing. So me, an animator, about 500 people away, had to lead this charge and literally design the UX wireframes for the in-game reporting feature post-launch and then forced Jerry Hook into a meeting in which he basically lambasted me for taking on the work myself, even though we basically had nothing going on except the occasional bug to fix, in front of Pierre. I also got in trouble from our safety team for saying publicly I would make sure the people that threw hate speech at the streamer, they literally were telling her to end herself, would be banned for life. <sighs> Sounds like the studio really had their priorities in check, huh? A report feature doesn't seem important for a free to play game. If it really is, then we'll cross that bridge when we get to it and wait until an animator steps up and does the job of the UX team. Yeah, great work by the leaders there, they're very organized and got all the key stuff down pat. It's also just ridiculous how this animator was harshly criticized for getting the report feature in the game while his duties were minuscule. And by the way, this happened months after the old leadership departed, so this was occurring under the new leadership, with Pierre at the helm. Let's get through the rest of what Will had to say. As a lifelong fan of Halo and Bungie, I really want it to be in good hands. I know it's a silly long shot, but I wish that certain affinity could just take over the Halo franchise entirely. Even from a pure fan perspective and completely ignoring the fact that I worked at 343 for 13 years. I think certain affinity would do an amazing job with our beloved franchise. The fact that 343 had to change their name to Halo Studios because fans and developers hate the studio's leadership and executive handling of it cannot be good for their team's morale. The wonderful employees and friends that are still stuck at 343 deserve better leadership and vision if they're going to continue trying to make Halo games worthy of the fans. Certain Affinity was so great to work with and they're true lovers of the Halo universe unlike the Halo corporate leadership team. I agree. I think Certain Affinity would do an amazing job with Halo, while 343, or now Halo Studios, lacks a genuine care or passionate vision for the franchise, especially among the upper management. They screwed us. We fought for years for them to switch to Unreal, even before Halo Infinite's production started, and all throughout it. The directors and Pierre fought against it with the rest of them. Pierre came back, laid off the loudest voices for Unreal, and some of the best developers in the industry us, and then finally took our advice. Feels good. I feel like they're changing the name to try to escape all the hate they got for being horrible to all of us during Infinite and Post-Infinite. 
forcing everyone to use slip space for seven years after we told them we needed a switch to unreal to keep making good on our promise with the fans is like the abuser cherry on top well actually making it seem like they just thought up the switch to unreal is the cherry on top what makes this even more interesting is the insider info Haley shared, which lines up with Will's claims that they'd been pushing leadership to switch to UE long before it actually happened. Let's see what Haley had to say. Former 343 dev slams leadership, calls Pierre Hintz cancer, and argues that Halo should be handed over to certain affinity. He says 343 rebranded to Halo Studios to escape hate and warns others against working there. This person spent 13 years at 343 Industries. Will Waltz also said that 343 is making it appear as if they only recently considered the move to UE5, when in reality, this was suggested to leadership many years ago. This so-called new dawn for Halo just seems like a marketing ploy, but I won't deny that their future games could be good. Yeah, the way this is all being marketed seems like just a show to capitalize off their new look and decision to use Unreal Engine. Their next Halo product might not be a letdown, but think about how much of a compliment that really is. She continues, What Walt said aligns with what I've shared in the past. The switch to UE isn't a new idea. A lot of people think it was Pierre Hintz's idea to switch to UE5, but that's not true. Since around 2015, Microsoft had been wanting to partner with other development studios specifically for Halo using UE4. It was meant to be an initiative for easy collaboration on assets and there was an agreement in place with Epic Games during this period when talks of using UE for Halo started. However, it wasn't until early 2017 that development on Unreal tooling began. Prior to this, it was only a Skunk Works project with no real plans to put it into full production. In mid-2018, Unreal development was kicked into full production and was going well. This build was used internally by the teams at 343 to rapidly prototype features for Halo Infinite, but by then, Infinite was already too far into development to switch to UE4. As a result, the UE4 Halo build remained a test bench. It was in a solid state and development continued on it in the background. The plan was to phase out the Blam engine after Infinite for use by 343 and other studios Microsoft was looking to partner with for future Halo games. This all changed when the Unreal team at 343 was let go during the layoffs. Microsoft had entered into a new agreement with Epic Games. The UE4 build was phased out and Epic Games engineers worked with 343, retooling UE5 for the future of Halo. The contract with Epic Games was set for 6 months, however these contract negotiations can go on for months or even years depending on requirements. So it looks like Microsoft had been wanting to switch to UE long before it officially happened and had a previous agreement with Epic Games, which had expired prior to entering into a new agreement with them. Huh. I also wanted to mention something else. A few months ago, I said that around July last year, Pierre Hintz expressed interest in pursuing a project involving MCC and that there was a new, smaller team formed to explore the idea of a revised Halo 3. What that project is or where it currently stands, I don't know. It could have been cancelled or might still be in development. I'm starting to think that it might have been Project Foundry or the Halo CE remake. Personally, I'm hoping it was Project Foundry as I don't want them touching Halo 3. I don't either, and that's not the most personal opinion. <laughs> Lastly, I want to emphasize that I'm not taking a side on Waltz calling Pierre Hintz cancer. I only quoted him. Many other things he mentioned aligns with the information I've shared in the past. Very good to know. Based on this and all the other stuff that's been coming out of 343 over the last few years, it's pretty clear that the idea of moving to UE isn't new and it definitely wasn't Pierre's idea. In fact, he actively opposed this idea, which ended up slowing down development. Pierre's inability to comprehend the rationale behind the developer's push for the switch to Unreal raises concerns, especially since he's now in charge of Halo Studios. So there you have it. 
An employee who is with 343 for 13 years is telling you that the new leadership is just as awful as the last and even called Pierre cancer. A taste of the new leadership directly from an employee under it. This is what so many people out there are praising. This is the leadership that people swear will save Halo. Forget all the signs of mismanagement and the stories that continue to come out. Let's just keep giving the abuser more chances. They might be different this time. I mean, look, they're saying they're gonna do better and they've got a new name, so they must be different. It's not like an ex-con who just got bailed out of prison and is now saying he's a changed man because he's wearing a new shirt. No, it's not like that at all. We should give them our full trust. <sighs> Why do people keep falling in the same cycle? I get wanting to be hopeful, but you gotta be realistic. Just because the people in the studio's leadership are different doesn't mean the leadership itself will be different. In fact, this new leadership consists of people who were friends with and worked closely with the previous leadership. Halo Studios is just a superficial change, and even looking past the studio, we can see why things aren't so promising. What about Microsoft? They're responsible for the awful state of Halo as well, so let's not forget about them. Who's to say their influence on the franchise won't be the exact same or even worse? There wasn't a shakeup there. The people who have been managing Halo since its decline are still there. Microsoft are the reason we had poor leadership in the first place. The people in upper management at 343 were put in there by Microsoft. Halo is run by a whole chain of people, not just a few lead developers. If the chain isn't holding up the franchise, look at the whole chain. Look at the top of it, or better yet, just get a completely new one. If we're looking at just the 343 part of the chain, it's still not the best idea to put so much faith into the new leadership when they could have very well adopted similar mindsets and traits from the previous era. But this is a new era now, isn't it? Yeah. Halo is gonna be made on Unreal Engine starting with the next game, and developers will have a much easier time working on it since it's open for everyone to use and plenty of people are already familiar with it. The research demo they showed gives us an idea of how pretty Halo can look on Unreal. They emphasized how Halo always pushed technological quality in gaming, particularly with its graphics. Halo was known for its graphics, but it was also known for its gameplay and depth, so I hope they're not prioritizing how it looks over how it plays, feels, or how much it offers. We know absolutely nothing about Halo's other features on Unreal. Looks are not everything. It shouldn't matter how pretty something is if it doesn't offer a good experience. This is gorgeous, but this is an absolutely awful space to fight bad guys in. This space needs to be fun before it's pretty. Unfortunately though, it seems that people tunnel vision on graphics, especially since the emphasis of cosmetics. For all we know, the first Halo game on Unreal Engine can be another live service game with an overwhelming amount of microtransactions. The next Halo title could have botched physics and not even feel like Halo at all. It could be unoptimized, sloppy, and missing features too, kinda like what we've seen in their track record. Hmm. There is a key benefit with shifting to Unreal Engine though. The developers don't have to spend a ton of time building their own engine and getting slowed down by learning outdated tools. As said by an X343 employee, the biggest thing in this was the talk about being both a tech and game company. That was incredibly difficult trying to build a boat and race it at the same time. Fair enough, but what was the excuse when there wasn't a brand new engine being made? The philosophies and misunderstandings of Halo that tainted the franchise could still be present at the studio. You can have faith that they won't be present, but you can also be realistic and acknowledge the possibility. 343 Industries have repeatedly disrespected fans and Halo itself. They've obliterated the trust of those who love Halo. The 343 name has been stigmatized and proven to be a mark of shame and poor quality, and that's exactly why they wanted to change their name. They're rebranding as Halo Studios in a desperate attempt to distance themselves from the negativity surrounding their past work. 
They want to have a clean slate, but they can't pretend like the past never happened, and we shouldn't either. The present state of their studio still has remnants of the past, and that's not a hunch. There are still bad apples there, yet people are thinking there aren't. It's like they're brainwashed. People everywhere get persuaded by headlines like this, especially people outside the Halo community. I have the perspective I do because I know a lot of things regarding Halo and 343 and even things others don't. It's different for those outside or who just don't keep up with everything that happens in Halo. Those people might even think Halo Studios is a completely different studio than 343 Industries, believing there's not one staff member who worked at both. It's so easy for people to get the wrong idea. They'll read that 343 is dead and believe it 100% under the impression that the 343 of today is drastically different from the one who ran Halo the past decade. Based on what? Based on the things they've said? Or is it just a feeling? If it's based on the things they've said, then I guess we've learned nothing from the past decade. We've been told great things that make us hopeful and promises that make us excited, just for what? For our hopes to be crushed? Fortunately, we have a studio that's really passionate about Halo, about the look and the feel. And We've heard this so many times from 343. What does it take to be considered passionate over there? We are really excited to be not just working on multiple projects, but... It's hard to believe this will go well, given that it's coming from a studio that struggled to deliver quality with one project at a time. There's so much momentum that we have right now. Yeah, momentum into the ground. New tech is obviously good momentum, but how about all the momentum that's tainted the franchise? How is that going to be stopped? All of what's being said is nice, you can't argue that, but it's the fact that similar things have been said in the past just for them not to deliver. I mean, just look at their last Halo game, Halo Infinite. Lots of enticing language was used to promote it, with emphasis on it being like the legacy titles. There was a ton of hype around it. Everyone felt like Halo was going to be making a big comeback. And then 343 let everyone down. Uh, this too. game is actually one of the worst things I've played in a long time, by the way. That is so sad what has happened to Halo. Wow. What we're hearing today is eerily similar. They're trying to entice us, as they've done for years now. We hear it again and again, but people are thinking, this time it's different. As if we're not just repeating the cycle. We should realize that gullibility by now. Come on, Charlie Brown. I'll hold the ball and you kick it. She wouldn't try to trick me. This time I'm gonna kick that football clear to the moon! <laughs> Being let down can be so heartbreaking. Don't put trust into something that hasn't earned it. I'm not telling you that you can't be excited for good news, but getting your emotions deeply involved like that comes with risk. It wouldn't be right to let you build up all that excitement just to be disappointed, while knowing that can likely happen. Those who encourage that undeserved hope are manipulating people into believing in something that's almost bound to fail. Some of them are doing it for selfish reasons too. They'll make Halo sound like it's making a comeback just to keep Halo relevant and their audience interested. They do it for their own growth, not for the growth of the franchise, and not to help your peace of mind. It's irresponsible. Hyping Halo Studios up too much will make them careless and let them get away with crummier quality. They and Microsoft want you to be hyped, but only so they can reel you in to invest in their product. You're just a customer to them at the end of the day, and they'll do whatever they can to sell you on their games, even if they have to mislead you. Don't fall for the trap. Given all that we've discussed, you really shouldn't get your hopes up. Not too high, anyway. I wanted to save this for the end, but believe it or not, I want Halo to succeed. I'm not just complaining to complain or hating to hate. I'm being critical. It might be a little harsh, but things never had to be this way with Halo. They never did a decade ago, and they never did now. There's a lot of criticisms about 343 Industries. Duh but far too often are they argued against, ignored, or even censored. I'm trying to hold their bad behavior accountable, especially to make sure that people who aren't aware of it know about it. Some things shouldn't be shrugged off, and they seriously need to be considered before we hype up a rebrand like this. Do I expect things to be better than what the past decade has shown?
Yeah, a little, but I'm also not gonna gamble on that. There's a good chance things won't be better despite the changes. I'd love to be proven wrong, but who knows? You don't. I don't. We can only hope. And with this, I'm not gonna hope for anything. I'm gonna assume the worst. It's the best thing to do. Again, don't give trust to something that hasn't earned it. If they give us enough reasons to believe they're capable of making a true Halo experience and will do it, then, and only then, will I give them trust. I want to trust that they're making changes for the better. I want to trust that they're aware of their mistakes and know where they went wrong. I want to trust that they won't repeat history and are truly in it for Halo and not themselves. But I can't. Many of us can't. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. But until then, don't get your hopes up.